But we begin tonight in West Maui. Firefighters there say the cards were stacked up against them when it came to fighting the fire on August the 8th. Nikki Shenfeld today speaking with a captain and a tanker driver who say they gave it their all to save historic Lahaina Town that day. Nikki. Yes, Howard, on Tuesday, August 8th, there was already a fire raging up country and a red flag warning in effect. And with decades of experience already under their belt, the two firefighters say they have never experienced winds like they did that day. Here's their story. We knew we were going to be in for a long day. Just didn't know what was in store for us. Pretty much overrun by fire down here. Um, we got uh, multiple I've never experienced wind like that on the island. Yeah, this was the windiest day I've ever seen in my life anywhere. You'd look down and, you know, three, four houses down, you'd notice there was a roof on fire over there. Um, propane tanks blowing off. Uh, you could hear at one point it, when it was venting, it sounded like a jet engine going off. And uh, my crew was just, they were covered in smoke and we were just constantly getting bombarded by the winds you know we'd, we'd get our lines off the truck and the wind the gust of winds were so strong they'd lay down you, you could barely stand up like it felt like it was going to blow you over you couldn't see you'd have embers and ash blowing in your face 15 years in this department i've never seen structure fire spread like a wildfire would i mean we it just ran on us all units all units we got to get out of the center of this fire once we knew we were out of water and our ability to fight the fire was limited. We shifted our objectives to just trying to evacuate the people. We were driving through the neighborhoods. That's as useless as I ever felt. Like you can't, you're not doing anything and we're trying as best as we can, but nothing was working in our favor. Basically all the cards were stacked up against us. When the smoke cleared Wednesday morning, they didn't have time to process what they were seeing. Sometimes you think, constantly think back about what if this was different, what if that was different, what, what, could, what could have changed, and you know, one of the things you think if we had more resources, but honestly, I think if we had more, I mean, I don't think, I think we could have had 100 fire trucks down there and it wouldn't have made a difference. We feel like, it's like the first time we felt like we couldn't do our job. Like, even though we gave it everything we had, it just, it wasn't enough and we weren't fast enough or like Cap said, oh, if I would have done this or maybe if I did this, you know, that's, and we're kind of coming back as a, a group, a family, you know, um, backing each other up, letting each other know, like, no, we, we did everything we possibly could. We ran out of water. We were where we were supposed to be at that particular moment. It just, we didn't have a chance. It was an unfair advantage. The crew that works with us, they knew their houses were probably burning, their loved ones. The whereabouts were unknown. Um, personally, friends of mine that lived in Lahaina that I was concerned about had no way of knowing where, what their location was. And I mean, we just, we didn't really have time to even think about it. We just kept working, kept doing our job. And they say a single family home fully engulfed requires four engines and two support companies. And that's all they had that day to try and save an entire town. Nikki Schoenfeld, KH12 News, back to you.